from the outdoor that has appeared in Hardbart, Business Week, TechCrunch, Venture Beat, and Giga Om. It's Larry Chiang. CS183E Lecture 7 is about getting distribution. It's about continuing our effort at the front lines of industry conferences uh, where executives from very specific industries go and congregate, typically at conferences and conventions. And we're going to continue with the example of carrots and selling carrots in Las Vegas uh, from the Tim Ferriss blog post on how sales promotions and sales events at conventions can definitely help you with distribution. Remember CS183E for edit for editing a startup. Tim Ferriss himself and admittedly got distribution and traction, all key things that VCs are looking for, by doing and promoting four hour work week at uh, South by Southwest in 2007. So his ability to see and promote is your, your ability to see how carrots are getting promoted and correlate that to the startup that you are editing. So we're trying to dovetail the prior works and genius things that uh, Tim's friends have come up with in selling carrots that Tim himself did in uh, promoting four hour work week and what I am recommending that you guys do which is to help get distribution for your startup that you're editing, the, the cadaver that you are practicing on. Doing something that's semi-sexy, semi-fun, or with cuteness. That's what the anchor of a booth should be, is something that's got a hook, just like in a song that's got something that's kitschy, that reels you in, that's what your sales booth is going to uh, vie for. That's what your sales booth is going to attempt, is to, to anchor them to a, or hook them to a close. And the way to do that is by having somebody who's a closer. That's your anchor. So I'm going to use phrases that are synonymous with anchor, but the overall gist is you want to do an anchor plus a point person. Uh, anchor is synonymous with closer, point person is synonymous with uh, satellite. So an anchor plus satellite or a closer plus an introducer. So that's the, the team selling concept that you are trying to do inside of your sales booth. And the picture of the carrot with Amy promoting carrots is a hook, is a come into my Uh, Winnebago that has been branded on carrots or in that case uh, some kind of carrot makeup innovation. I don't know. I don't use makeup. Okay, I do, but anyway. So Anchor Plus Satellite and that is also here in this diagram. So here you've got the anchor and that's the booth, okay? Those are the surrounding booths and they are in competition with your booth. So you've got an anchor that sits behind the table and then you've got two satellite people. These two satellite people, uh, I'm trying to do this blind here, <laughs> two satellite people that are funneling into the anchor. So the anchor's job, along with the satellite and point people, synonymous, is to increase the red zone. The red zone is where you get sales and leads. The red zone is where you get uh, people to sign on a dotted line. Not necessarily a contract, but definitely a lead generation form, which is name, email, cell phone number optional. Name, email, cell phone number optional. That way, if they are providing you a cell phone number, they're a real lead uh, because they care. They're not just trying to fill out a contest form or what I hate, scanning a badge. You scan the badge and then, oh, they're a lead and it's an electronic form. No, I like to actually see the paper handwritten. Are they a real lead? Do they really want to be contacted? Did they take effort uh, in filling out their name and email address? What email address did they give you? Did they give you... Uh, 
I need a man at man.com or Anita at man.com or some kind of joke email or that they give you not only the real email which is the work email but also their real cell phone so that's the red zone now the yellow zone is before they enter the red zone and the green zone is where people are just flying by so this is the red zone okay so this is this is the initial red zone it's very very small it's an initial dotted line area it's barely even behind the table when people approach the table, there's going to be a bigger red zone. And that's what the point people and the satellites, they're to drive traffic to your exact uh, table to get interested in and to be introduced to the closer. Let's go into a sp incredibly specific example, uh, EP underscore names. It's uh, executive producers, Names, North American Manufacturing Excellence Summit. So it's in Wheeling, Illinois, and it's at the Westin Hotel. And it's literally, I don't want to say Wheeling's in the middle of nowhere, because there is the Wheeling Airport and Museum. I sound like I'm joking because I'm conveying something serious, is that industry executives actually go to places like Wheeling, Illinois. And they actually do think that North American Manufacturing Excellence Summit is a thing to go to. And it's not glamorous, but there are buyers. And literally millions and millions of dollars will be uh, transacted at these conferences. EP underscore names, just like the tweet. Now, if you are a startup and you're trying to get distribution uh, for a startup that you're editing, I can bet you a big bet the bet everything on this fact that the IV DBs who started the startup that you're editing they didn't kowtow and bow to the Cincinnati Ohio chief technology officer who can code barely code his way out of a wet paper bag okay that's even Mr. Robot, the the faux USA Network series, the the CTO of the, one of the most powerful companies uh, on the Mr. Robot TV show, he was kind of an idiot, right? He's chief technology officer, and he's kind of an idiot. Well, welcome to the world that everyone lives in. The people who are in power are not necessarily the people who just learn how to code or know that Amazon Lambda is a thing or you're even thinking about reading things on WebAssembly. That's not what they do, okay? They go to meetings and they haven't learned anything since they went to CS school in the 80s. I don't know anybody like that. I've been continuing education. I crashed a bunch of schools to learn their CS. Executives, back, to, back on point, executives meet at these conferences because they need the next thing but they can't be disturbed on their past thing that's why they go to these kinds of conferences and your ability to network your ability to get distribution rests on your hacking and uh, optimizing how you network at these conferences so I've never heard of phase 5 group but they are going to be doing a booth they're going to be doing a sales booth. They're going to be at names doing this. They're going to be at names doing this. North American Manufacturing Excellence Summit, they will be actually trying to network via a booth. So here are things that you guys inside of CS183E can do and as far as Lecture 7 goes. And write this down. You want to EUTM. P e u t w m p p m e u t let me repeat that e u t w m p p m engineer up grab a pen grab a pen engineer up a tidal wave of momentum perpetual promotion machine write this down seriously press pause grab a pen i'll wait engineer up a tidal wave of momentum perpetual promotion machine hashtag e u t w m PPM. Write this down, write this down. EUTWM PPM. 
So you're going to be trying to get distribution and you will literally have a tidal wave of momentum. A great analogy that someone just used at South by Southwest is this is a snowball rolling down a hill. Initially, it's a very small snowflake. You and two special people, you and one other person trying to do this editing thing and practicing on a cadaver. Initially, you're two snowflakes, very special, okay? But what you wanna be is you wanna be a snowflake rolling down the hill, and that's what a tidal wave of perpetual promotion machine does. Les this, doing an Eventbrite event at the Westin Hotel after hours. So you're doing an 11 minute party, and I've documented exactly how to do an 11 minute party. Celeste Henkel, uh, Celeste is traditional, uh, on Twitter, traditional Celeste, H Henkel, H-E-N-K-E-L is her Twitter. It's, I think Celeste Henkel Men is her full name, but that's, it's just Celeste Henkel, H-E-N-K-E-L. She documents exactly how to do an 11 minute party, an 11 minute party. Execs know when to show up for an 11 minute party. They don't know when to show up at the party six to eight. They don't know when to show up at the party seven to nine. And if you're competing against groups that are super well funded, like phase five networks, you're going to need a little hack. So your Eventbrite connects to a YouTube where you're embedding a 28 second to 38 second video. And the rest of EUTWM PPM is on the hashtag EUTWM PPM because your Eventbrite connects to your SlideShare, connects to a whole multitude. So that's your anchor plus satellite concept using social media. Sales hacking also is where you try to wrap something cute and cuddly to something that's kind of technical and for other people's opinion, semi-boring. A very specific example is, is Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE. It's on Twitter at H as in Hewlett, P as in Packard, E Enterprise, HPE. If you're trying to promote uh, distributed networking and uh, just trying to load balance power, you're gonna need to, and that's incredibly technical concepts where you're trying to use software to try to load balance. You're gonna need something fluffy and cute. That's where the anchor or the point is something cute. Not even joking. You can actually use a fluffy puppy, which the picture to my, this side is showing, which is Brady the dog, knowledge activating and brand activating HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now what you're trying to do with uh, Brady the dog, Brady the Shih Tzu, is he's right there. Brady, Brady, good boy. Brady, we're talking about uh, the good stuff that you did uh, at South by Southwest. Brady, you barely see Brady. He's like tucked between his toys. <laughs> Having Brady increases the red zone. That's what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase uh, sales conversion. You're trying to increase lead generation. Now, the reason that the startup died, the one that you're editing, is because they didn't have a Brady. They didn't even think to use a Brady, and they thought that just hiding behind their computer would get them their initial distribution, and it doesn't. You kind of need to get out into the, not kind of, you very specifically need to get out into the real world, show yourselves, get feedback, generate leads, because like Tim Ferriss says, a lot of these people would never email you back, the ones that you meet in the real world. And that's where you're trying to increase your uh, deal flow. You're trying to in literally increasing distribution. So to wrap this portion of uh, doing a trade show is you can use the resources that you have uh, at your disposal if even if the amount of resources is minuscule and tiny, you can still engineer up a tidal wave of momentum, perpetual promotion machine. Selling in a booth, selling uh, over the phone, that's merely an attempt to promote mentorship uh, while marketing your product. So it's mentorship marketing via, via specific vehicle of mentoring executives on the things that you know. So when you think you're a spammy, salesy person, 
you tend to not be as enthusiastic as you would if you thought that you were mentoring executives, if you were mentoring prospects to do things better, to save money for insights on what to expect and mentoring people on what to pay attention to. You can actually write those down. I just rattled off the mentorship formula that I was taught from Brandon Burchard, which is under Experts Academy. What to pay attention to, how things might turn out, what to expect. And these are things that you as a CS person who is now Chief Revenue Officer of a defunct YC editing a dead company practicing on a cadaver, that's what initially the founders probably didn't spend a lot of effort doing is they didn't spend a lot of effort mentoring prospects. They just said, oh, they don't get it. Well, let's hope they don't get it because if they do get it, okay, they'd be doing your job for you way better than you. So I'm hopeful that they don't get it. So that way they can know what I know and that way they do get it and that's my job is to discover people that don't get it i don't complain that people don't understand fico scores even vcs that went to iv schools that now have millions of dollars they literally don't understand fico score i don't blame them that they don't know that fico has a very particular set of algorithms that you need to hack via po boxes po box 105 281 I'm glad that they don't know that. I'm glad they don't get it. And if there's a disconnect, it needs to reconnect because you can't just embrace the disconnect, which is, oh, they don't get it. Now, Steve Blank talks about something which I'll go into in lecture eight, is startup death spiral. Startup death spiral by hoping that you can just outsource all of this sales and promotion and distribution work to a VP of sales. That's why you're editing a dead startup because that's what they did. Page 99, oh, creepy, right? I can visualize it. Page 99 of Four Steps to an Epiphany specifically cites the thing that I have found time and time again, which is that startup founders, the first time they ever try to promote something is their own thing. Deadly, that's why it's a death spiral.